everyone, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Vlogmas Day 7. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you, which if you're new here is where I talk about the books I've read in the last seven days. And if you're very familiar with the series, welcome back. This is my reading week from the 29th of November until the 5th of December. I read a total of five things this week, 1,689 pages, and my yearly reading total is up to 377 books. I had one DNF this week and it was all stirred up by Brianne Moore. This came in a bag crate box and I did start reading it. I was reading it for the Romance Takeover Readathon as a recently released book. However, I was about 20 pages in and I know that's not very far in, but I just did not care at all. So unfortunately I put this down and replaced it with something else and it was a good thing that I did because I really enjoyed what I replaced it with. But more on that later. The first book that I read this week was Raven Song by TJ Klune. This is the second book in the Green Creek series. It was originally published in 2019. I gave it five out of five stars. I can just tell this series is going to get better and better. And that's not just because my booktube friends have been saying that, it's because the quality of the writing and the story is just so gripping. It's really, really hard to talk about this book because it does tie in so heavily to the first book and it does include a lot of spoilers. If you have not heard anything about the Green Creek series, it follows a family of werewolves, the Bennets, and the relationships that they have with other people. This particular story focuses on Gordo Livingstone and Mark Bennett. It is really a second chance romance between these two men after many years and many hurts between the two of them. Beyond that, I really can't say anything because it is one of those series that you actually just need to read to actually appreciate it. Because if I start talking about it, I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, especially not in a short period of time. What I will say is I actually enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed Wolf Song. I think I was intrigued from the get-go by both Mark and Gordo when I was reading about them in Wolf Song, and so I was really anticipating this story and it didn't disappoint. So I suspect that you are going to be hearing more about the Green Creek series sooner rather than later. And then I read Hideout by Jack Heath. This is the third book in the Timothy Blake series. It is a 2020 release that I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks motorbikes. I did receive this as a review copy from Alan and Unwin, so thank you very much to them. It did have its book birthday last week. Last Tuesday was its day of release and I read it over the Tuesday and the Wednesday. If you have not read any of the other Timothy Blake books, this book does pick up right at the tail end of the second book and the events that happen there. So Timothy Blake is a civilian consultant for the FBI. He's also a cannibal. And we know this, we find this out very early on in the series. The events of the second book have kind of sent him into a bit of a spiral. And we begin this book with a Blake who has nothing to lose. And so he decides to go after a target Fred who is the head of a dark web criminal organization. And Blake has plans to kill this Fred character and then disappear for good. However, when he finally meets Fred, he discovers that he has a team around him. And so suddenly Blake's plans are not as simple as he first thought. Blake needs to make this team believe that he's someone else and that he's one of them. And then someone in that team gets murdered. The whole thing is delightfully creepy and gruesome. This is not a book for those faint of heart, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I also read one of Katie Roberts' Patreon shorts. This was Hercules' Punishment, which was the November Patreon short, it, so it's a 2020 release. I haven't given it a star rating because it's kind of hard to rate something that short. However, this short story takes place after The Sea Witch because in The Sea Witch, Hercules actually interferes with something that happens in that book and it has consequences. And this is the punishment that he receives as a result. I always like coming back to Hercules, Meg and Hades. They're my favorite characters in the series. And it was nice to see this follow up from the scene in The Sea Witch. Then I read Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake by Sarah McLean. This is the first book in her Love by Numbers series. It was originally published in 2012, I believe, and I gave it five out of five stars. Ostensibly, it probably would not necessarily be a five star read. However, I read it as my break in case of emergency book this week because I have just been feeling completely shattered down and out and I needed something that I knew that I was going to thoroughly enjoy and I did thoroughly enjoy this book and so part of a five star rating for me with a lot of times is the emotional impact of that book and so consider this a situational five out of five stars. It is the story of Lady Carpernia Hartwell who is 28 years old and considered on the shelf 
She is unmarried and her younger sister is about to get married to a duke. Kelly decides that it's time that she lives her life and she does all those things that she's never been able to do and eventually enlists the help of Gabriel St John the Marquess of Ralston. Her plan is to get him to help her with some of the items off a list that she has created of things that she would like to do that include everything from being kissed to gambling in a men's gambling den and all sorts of things. You get the list at the start of the book. In exchange for helping Kelly Ralston has his own set of conditions which includes helping his younger half-sister come out in society and so their two lives begin to entwine even further particularly as Callie becomes good friends with his sister and as Callie and Ralston develop an attraction for one another. The whole thing was just utterly delightful and fun and I couldn't put it down once I started. And finally I read Archangel Sun by Nalini Singh. This is the 13th book in the Guild Hunters series. It was released last week I believe or maybe the week before. It has a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. This book, I kind of consider it an interlude. So it's a 2020 release. I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars and honestly I'm considering bumping it up to 5 because again it was a book I couldn't put down. Being 13 books into a series it's kind of hard to talk about it without going into all of the backstory. But suffice to say in the last book there was a war between all of the archangels and it's devastated the world. So many places are in ruins, particularly New York. So many people died. And there are lasting consequences in Africa where Titus is, has taken over as the Archangel of Africa to help clean up after everything that happened. But the remnants of that war, uh, these creatures called Reborn, who have been infected by a disease that makes them really difficult to kill. And if you get bitten or scratched or whatever by one of these Reborn and you're a vampire or potentially a human, I think, as well, then you become a reborn yourself. So Titus is try is dealing with a really nasty outbreak and a really persistent strain of this infection and it's ravaging places within his territory. So the cadre, which are the ruling archangels, decide to send him help and they do so in the form of Shireen or the hummingbird who we as long-term readers know is Ilium or Bluebell's mother. And she has her own story because for a very long time in the series, what we've considered is that she's very fragile, very broken, and she lives inside her mind. She's been through and experienced events that have truly broken her. But at the beginning of this book, she started to find herself again. She started to come into her own. She is a very old angel. She has experienced many, many things and she is very powerful, but she doesn't actually understand either how old she is or how powerful she is. When she's sent to Titus, the two of them clash because the hummingbird has been considered a beautiful artist who has been lost in her own mind for so long. And she's considered a treasure. And so Titus treats her as such, even though Shireen wants to help, she wants to be involved and she doesn't want to be put by the wayside. She wants to be an integral support for him. So there are a lot of memorable scenes, a lot of clashes, and it was honestly delightful. Theirs was a very slow burn romance and in a lot of ways it's also an age gap romance but of course we're talking about immortals so that part of it doesn't matter so much except to state that while Titus is old Shireen is much much older and so it impacts on the way that she views everything around her but again it's not like a contemporary age gap romance it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. I really adored this. Was this the best book in the Guild Hunter series? Maybe not but it was a really beautiful interlude into what has been an ongoing story arc with two characters who have previously always been on the periphery as very minor characters and we suddenly get their story and it was just lovely. So oh, I'm really glad that I read this. So those are the books that I read this week. I will leave a link to all the books down below so that you can check them out if you want more information. Today's shout out is a very good friend of mine who I've talked about many times and shouted out many times but I'm going to continue to shout her out because she is wonderful and that is Leanne from Literary Diversions or you may know her from Novel Menagerie. Leanne is just an absolute delight. She has some of the most engaging videos that I watch. I particularly like her tops and bottoms videos. I do like her rant videos because they are highly entertaining but I also love that she has started up her own Etsy business. She has the most gorgeous products in her Etsy store that she designs and she just has so much time for everyone. So I will leave her linked down below. I'm really lucky to call her a friend here on booktube and I hope that you will check her out if you have never seen any of her videos before because she really is wonderful. I hope that wherever you are in the world you are staying safe and healthy and I will see you tomorrow in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.